All men are fools, and what makes them so is having beauty like what I have got. I used to love watching him when Glenda Jackson, who was this very straight, award-winning actress, she'd find it very difficult not to corpse. Him. You have a plan? Leave me alone. <laughs> Trying to sort of crack each other up a little bit was always good fun, particularly with a guest star. Six pound worth of cut lights. Harbour lights. Harbour lights for the cut ship. <laughs> Ship's cut, yes. Would you like to come back next week? Yes. Good luck. Because I'd had quite a lot of experience with comedians, I knew that they got very uncomfortable if they couldn't make you laugh. And if I can't get those three things, well, I shall be completely deaf in my right leg for the rest of my life. <laughs> Completely deaf in your right leg. Will you speak up, please? <laughs> so I thought, what I will do is fake being unable to stop myself laughing. So I did that, and the re relaxation in his eyes was absolutely amazing. This is a recording contract. A recording contract? You see, the recording company I'm with... Yes? ...heard you sing and wants to sign you up. <gasps> That's absolutely wonderful! Great! Never mind the Queen, I did the Royal Command in 64. I most certainly will. I'm thrilled pleasure. about this, Silla. I really am, so. Never mind that, I'd been invited to do a guest appearance on the Morecambe and Wise show. How good is that? Eric, they don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> well, they only want Ernie, they don't want you. I mean, they just don't want you. <laughs> It was so well rehearsed, oh. but they had the talent to make it look like as if they've come from their house, haven't had the tea, Bring me sunshine. and then walked straight into your living room and did it all. Not so. It was very, very well rehearsed. In this world, we live, there should be more happiness. Jewish brand on bright tomorrow. <laughs> One thing they were sticklers about was rehearsal. Hey, your looks, it's a terrifying sight. And I'm sure they turned down many big name guest stars who say, yes, but we can only give you two days rehearsal or one day's rehearsal. Bring me fun! Bring me fun! The one person they broke the rule for was Andre Previn. Good night. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. What's the matter, Mr. Preview? Preview? Don't go, Mr. Preview. I can... Privet. Pre Previn. 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 <laughs> I can assure you that Eric is more than capable. Yeah. Well, all right. I'll, I'll go get my bat. Please do that. Yes, it's, it's in Chicago. <laughs> it's right. in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> the agent rang me and he said, well, I'm very sorry, but he's had to fly to America. I said, well, when does he get back? And he said, well, the night before your show. Believe me, you're in for a surprise, Mr. Preview. Previn. Privet. Pri uh, uh. <laughs> Open the curtains, please. Yes. Poor old Eric, sweating. He said, I don't think this is going to be as funny as you think it is. I said, Eric, this bloke probably knows every note of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony of all the instruments. He's not going to have no trouble with 15 pages of dialogue, <laughs> which is, he learned it with a torch coming from London Airport, you see. My favourite sketch is the Andre Previn sketch. An absolute masterclass, both in timing, in constructing a ridiculous scenario that can then be made even more ridiculous. <laughs> The introduction is just a bit short. By how much? I would say about, about that much. Yes. <laughs> about a yard? It's about a yard. About a yard. About a yard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing now thinking you banned it. Everyone always says that line of, uh, I'm playing all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. <laughs> but there are other lines in that sketch. There's a beautiful moment when Eric's playing the piano badly, and he looks up at them, and he just... The delivery of the line of saying... So they're wrong with the violins? <laughs> no, no, there's nothing wrong with the violins. 
That's only your opinion. I think you've got nearly 20 minutes of magic there, made by three men at the top of their profession. You're playing all the wrong notes. <laughs> My father, straight afterwards, said that, you know, that that was the best. It wouldn't get any better than that. And I think he was right. <laughs> I'm playing all the right notes, <laughs> but not necessarily in the right order. <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll give you that, sunshine. <laughs> Merry Christmas, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas to you, too, <laughs> There was one time of year that became synonymous with the name Morecambe and Wise. Their first Christmas show was in 1969 and it was soon to become the highlight of the television year. Christmas Day, what do you do? You wake up, you open your presents. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Have we got time for any more? I think so. <laughs> That's lovely. And welcome to the Christmas show. Yes. You have lunch, you have to watch the Queen. <laughs> hey! You go for a walk. We didn't do that bit, so I'm going to take that one out. And you watch more Paul Wise. That's it. <laughs> I do remember watching my grandmother and my parents and my little brother laughing at these two silly guys dressed as turkeys. There's a level of Eric and Ernie's comedy that everyone can tap into. Morning, damn it! We used to have a um, Christmas ritual in our house that centred around the Morgan Wise show. Let's make things. It wasn't a ritual insofar as there was incense in the room, but it was something that we all did. Christmas the Christmas schedule was the highlight of the BBC's year and Eric and Ernie obviously were expected to do a Christmas show and getting swept up in that BBC Christmas schedule they lifted their ambitions. So who's Mr Reekham? <laughs> Mr Reekham, I haven't met Reekham. Mr Reekham at the moment. Reekham. Who's, who's Mr Reekham please? Well, well, that's you, but I'm not all there. <laughs> We all know that! I was doing the programming for London Weekend Television, so I had mixed emotions about the fact that the whole nation was switched to BBC One on Christmas night. Nobody was watching my channel. Are you ready? Ah, that's much better. Now, wait a minute, there's just one thing wrong with this. Yes? What's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I am. The routine was that we had a, a family Christmas here. There was always about 14 of us every Christmas. And that afterwards, um, we would watch the Morecambe and Wise show. I've almost got it right. Almost There's one little thing missing. It was that. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie would say, let's go home and pull up the drawbridge because they'd done the TV a week or so before Christmas. So we could go and collect the relatives and we could have a normal Christmas. We just go straight into the dance. Melody and F. You know that? La da 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 great variety. Let's finish on that. Yeah, we start slowly and then we build up to a high speed. OK, here we go. We've got the flickers going. The thing that always struck me as slightly weird but wonderful was that he would just fall about laughing at the show. And at the end of it, he'd always just turn around and just say, Ernie worked really well tonight. It's fabulous, that. Which is interesting, because it reminds me of Stan and Ollie, Laurel and Hardy. Because um, Oliver Hardy was like that, he'd always just say, oh, Stan's brilliant, you know, I'm watching them. And he could, he'd look at his partner. When my agent phoned up and said, you've been asked to be on the Morecambe and Wise show, I didn't even say, when is it? I just said, yes, immediately. And so you'd go along to rehearse. When you'd go to the canteen and people say, what are you doing? And people were doing Shakespeare and Brecht and... Agatha Christie, and what are you doing, Penny? Morecambe and Wise, you're not! How wonderful! <laughs> the only thing we didn't rehearse was the coming down the staircase. Eric had told me that there would be a staircase that wasn't finished, and the last step or two would not be there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get down there. I suffer vertigo. Oh, 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 vertigo. Just, uh, it's winged, isn't it? No. I... <laughs> and I said, Eric, um, you said the last step or two. This is about six foot. He said, I know they didn't have time to build a set. Now, whether this was true or not, I don't know. <laughs> Dignity at all times. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you can. I feel very special. I feel, I feel part of a special brand. As an 
actress, you don't, I didn't feel the pressure that I'm sure they must have felt because it wasn't called Penelope Keith, but it was called Morecambe and Wise.